Good afternoon and welcome back to ABG Sundle Colliers Investor Days. My name is Benjamin Wallstead. I am an equity research analyst here at the Stockholm office covering the consumer sector. Uh, with me today, I have Emblems Group and CEO Ola Svensk to, uh, to present his company. So, um, Ola, go ahead. Thank you very much. Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Ola Svensk, and as Benjamin mentioned, I'm the CEO of Emblems Group. I will uh, fairly quickly go through our latest Q3 report, but then also leave open for questions after that. So first of all, I want you to just spend two seconds or even more to, to take a look at our new uh, flagship uh, showroom in Chelsea for Cole & Son, where we have relocated our head office actually. So we have a building there of four, with four floors, but this is the flagship uh, gallery that we opened in September where consumers can enter, of course, but also, more importantly, architects and designers. So we are now in the middle, in the center, where many of them are in the center of London. Ambulance Group, we, we are a company that own and develop strong brands in interior decoration. We are in wallpaper, in rugs, window films, cushions and textile. So some highlights from, from the uh, third quarter, uh, I mean, Despite a very challenging uh, geopolitical and also economical situation, we delivered uh, a growth of uh, a little bit more than 8%, but more importantly, more 4.3% organically and in all three months during the quarter. Uh, and over the last one and a half years, we have actually we have worked uh, relentlessly, I would say, to lower our cost base. And this showed uh, uh, really in the quarter where we have a nice leverage effect on our profitability as well. Uh, during these uh, one and a half year, we have reduced uh, uh, head count with, with uh, some 15% actually. And that is really kicking in here in the quarter. We have no adjustments uh, during the quarter at all, so the EBITDA landed on 26.5 million. And the focus ahead, uh, nothing dramatic here. We will continue to prioritize organic growth, continue to make sure that our existing portfolio of brands have the rep right prerequisites to, to continue to grow, grow in the channels where there is growth right now. Uh, and also to, to strengthen our offering. And with that, I mean not the least product innovation, where we have some exciting product that we are launching with some of our brands during next year. And then, uh, you know, the, the focus on, on uh, discipline in our spending will, will remain, but we also need to improve our cash flow. That was not really on the level that we wanted during the quarter. But I'll come back to that later, later on. Some key figures, probably most of you have seen it here. Uh, I mentioned it before uh, with, with uh, our sales and profitability. Operating cash flow was not on the level that we want it now. Uh, there are several reasons to it, but we have a, uh, we, our accounts receivable are on quite high level during the month or during the quarter, but we actually expect our, both our inventory but also our cash flow to improve now in the fourth quarter. And net sales uh, rolling 12, it's been hoovering around 700 million. And uh, the EBITDA, as you can see here in the quarter, uh, was pretty good. Um, but we, we still have uh, some miles to go to come back to the levels we were at in, uh, in uh, 21 and 22, actually. <clears throat> Looking into our three segments, uh, historically the largest one is, is the Nordics. It's still the largest one, but we are starting to have a healthier portfolio in terms of geographical uh, spread, if you like. Now we have 35% of our sales in, in the Nordics, and def uh, by far the biggest part is, of course, Sweden. During the quarter, we, we were able to bounce back to a healthier level in terms of a beta margin with 12%. <clears throat> Uh, it was uh, basically the demand in Sweden that was quite good. Norway and Finland has started to come back a little bit uh, during the third quarter, but Sweden was fairly stable. One of the reasons, but it was, it was only 
1.7 million sec actually was, was the launch of Borosan during the quarter. So it didn't have a, a major impact in the quarter. We do have uh, launches coming into, of that collection into to, uh, October though. So adjusted EBITDA 8.1 and uh, uh, the, the cost out program that we communicated and launched Q4 or a year ago <clears throat> continued to live, deliver uh, good efficiencies and also helps us to have a, a healthier profit level. Europe, which for several quarters now has been our most profitable uh, uh, segment, uh, we reached 58.7. Million sec, uh, strong growth in the UK, which is our third largest market. Also in Italy, which is our fourth largest market, and in France. We do see weakness in the dealer segment. In Europe, we are mainly distributed uh, in, in furniture store or in interior uh, decoration showrooms. Not like in Sweden, where you find us in paint shops. But anyhow, uh, dealer segment is softer in the market uh, and we are able to compensate our overall sales mainly with hospitality business, uh, sales into uh, hotels and restaurants, mainly hotels. Adjusted uh, EBITDA uh, margin of 19%, uh, a good level and the kind of level we should, we should be above 15% here. So it was a, it was a, a quite good uh, overall quarter, I have to say, but dealer segment is under pressure, but we are compensating that with hospitality and also with our direct consumer business. Rest of the world, uh, which, uh, where the largest market by far is the US. Uh, it's it's uh, our second largest market, and it's not only because of Artscape uh, sales, it's also an important market for Kohl and Sun, and starting to become really important for Borosta Peter. Uh, good sales growth, uh, all, uh, all major markets in this, in this very, very big uh, region uh, uh, delivered. But we also have some larger deliveries in hospitality in the in US, in West Indies, in, in Asia as well, and in North Africa. Adjusted EBITDA, 13%. It's okay, not really on the level where we, we, we would expect it to be. It should bounce back to be above 15%, but we're not there yet. But we now have 33. A third, a third of our revenue is from outside Europe and Nordics, basically, which we believe is health, much healthier for us in terms of our uh, overall uh, business. So, <clears throat> as a summary then, uh, we achieved uh, strong organic growth despite the, you know, the outside world, if you like. Uh, we grew organically 4.3, which is the most important, one of the most important numbers here, but also that we grew all three months during the quarter. Our continuous work on having our cost control is paying off. As soon as we get some organic growth, we have nice leverage on our profitability as well. We reached 26.5 million. And the focus has ahead, as I mentioned here before, uh, will remain. And we continue to build a high quality company that is really fueled by professionalism and passion, because passion is one of the core drivers, I would say, in this industry. Perfect. Thank you. So, Thank Benjamin, you. maybe you have some questions or someone I else. I do, I do. Uh, let's start with a very general one, maybe. So, um, when speaking to investors, what would you say the biggest misconception about your business is? I would say that there are... I would probably select three ones. First, one question that, that I tend to get many times is that aren't you a cyclical company that are, you know, is, is following uh, the d number of dwellings being done uh, in the market. And we are not. We are not affected when it goes up or when it goes down, actually. Uh, so we have a fairly stable business in, in, in that respect. Um, a second one is that we are, aren't you very much Sweden and Borosta Peter? Sweden is our largest market, and Borosta Peter Sweden together is maybe a third of our market. But over the last years, we have, we have now, as I mentioned, two-thirds outside 
Sweden. We have uh, grown organically and through acquisition outside the Nordics. We have a much healthier and balanced portfolio than we had uh, before. And then I have to mention probably a third one. We are a multi-channel company. So we are not a direct-to-consumer company that sometimes I get questions about. We do do a direct-to-consumer business, and we have a good growth there. But we go into the market, depending on brand, through agents or distributors, with, with the dealers or direct-to-consumers. What is important for us is that they can present our offering in a good way and that it's profitable. We have good growth in direct-to-consumer. We, we, we are growing around 30% in that area. But we're also growing on the same, almost the same level in hospitality. So those are our two growth engines while the dealer segment is, is, is softer. So those, I would say, are the three ones. That's a very elaborate answer. Yeah. And uh, I also note that I think um, Previously, when we've spoken in this forum, you've mentioned this 30% uh, growth for the e-commerce channel mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, growth is not slowing down then, I take it. No, it's, it's on the same level. It's on the same level as before, during the quarter. Perfect. Or during this year. You have a very diverse portfolio, both in, in design, um, even product type, and, and also price point. Um, I guess Colin Sun could be resilient due to the nature of the consumers, maybe. Uh, mm. Luxury brand, maybe not affected as much by higher interest rates. Um, but in Q3, Borås Tapeter performed very well. Um, mm. Mid-price brands typically don't tend to fare very well in, in times of a tougher consumer uh, market. Could you give us some additional flavor on that, please? On Boros Tapeter. Yes, yeah. please. I mean, during the quarter, uh, there, are, there are two things worth mentioning that, that uh, fueled Boros Tapeter's growth. One is growth outside uh, Sweden or Nordic, mainly in the US. Uh, and I mean, one of our best sold articles in Boros Tapeter is it's priced, uh, Dahlia Garden, is priced uh, at around 900 Swedish sec over the counter. So it's not. Uh, I mean, it's, it's in the premium uh, segment, if you like. But the other part that also we had uh, uh, some extra business with, it's the Borosan, the, the collection to professional, that is priced in the, you know, in the basic segment. So we, we, had, uh, we had good business in both levels, I would say. But the best-selling items is actually in the premium segment that Borosta Petras. Could you share some additional insights into the consumer behavior here, maybe? It does not sound like you see any um, down trading uh, or anything of that sort. No, I, no I, 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 we have not seen anything like that, that they are down trading. Uh, no, I wouldn't say so. Uh, I, I think you should... Maybe if you are a retailer covering with a portfolio with many brands and many price positioning, you could, you could, uh, they could probably answer that much better than I can. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. Um, so uh, let's talk a bit about Colin Sun. You showed us. Well, I guess this, this is actually this the is building. A sketch. Yeah, yeah, this um, is the sketch of the building. So most welcome. Are you, or are you able to share with us any learnings from, or any initial takes or initial learnings from, from the opening of the, of the showroom? I appreciate that it's very, very early days so far. I mean, the, the, it is a bit, it's kind of 60 days uh, after the opening. So the, 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 the flagship gallery, as we call it, is here where we can invite, you know, consumers and, and architects and designers. And, and I would say there are, one thing is that all of a sudden it's we are much it's much easier and and uh, to come and visit us compared to where where our previous headquarters was uh, was so we're really close to the community that we're addressing and we are a bit still a bit unrepresented in this segment in the london area so it's very important for us here. so we have the, the flagship store but we also have a vip room here where we have only by appointment meetings here. So coming closer to that community that are, are the ones that are specifying luxury residentials and apartments and hotels, that's, that's really important. So we have had many, many more interactions and meetings uh, 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 with them and that segment. The other part is consumers 
want to have, when they can buy products coming in here. Not necessarily are they interested only to buy wallpaper, but they want to buy other categories and to get a piece of, you know, uh, an accent, a piece of the whimsical design world of Kona Sun, but in, a, in another uh, uh, product, like throws or cushions or things like that. Much, much more, I mean, we should not exaggerate here, but much more than we thought before. So we, 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 are, we are running now to, to uh, uh, increase a little bit the inventory on those kind of products, because they want to have it today, now, this Saturday. They are not willing to wait. Hmm. And sometimes there are some lead times on these products. So I would say this is the, the, the key finding so far. But 60 days in, no. uh, I'm sure you will come back to that question a year from now. Absolutely. I'm, I'm curious as well, um, if I've understood it correctly, a uh, large part of Cole & Son's sales are through through decorators. Essentially, people hire someone to decorate their home, mm -hmm. uh, to hang the wallpaper. Do you see any sort of difference in the customer mix in this store compared to what you would see otherwise or elsewhere or anything? I mean, given the location and the area we are, it's more of an upscale uh, audience that visits here. But it's a large portion is professional ones, but also uh, consumers here. And, and we, as I mentioned before, I mean, one of the key reasons of several to move here is to, to be able to interact with them much more because it's quite, it, there are a lot of them that have their studios in this area here. Uh, so, so we do have a different audience. I mean, they didn't, in, in plain English, they didn't visit us in the last place because it was so far off. It was London postal co code, but it was too far away. Uh, moving on perhaps to, to Artscape then, um, you've been talking about the European expansion for, for the brand. Uh, mm. Can you share with us any updates uh, in that regard? What I can mention is that we, we have signed with a distributor um, uh, a couple of months back. The launch is taking longer time than we expected. Uh, we have had uh, several meetings, both the distributors but also uh, colleagues from Artscape, Artscape team with the customers in Europe. I mean, we get uh, uh, praise for in terms of design and, and quality and uh, compared to any, it's nothing like that in the Europe mar European market. Um, uh, have we sold a lot into Europe? No, we haven't. So that's it. To be seen, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, so, if looking at your whole portfolio, you, you have Brost Peter, very, very strong brand. Um, mm -hmm. Market share is signi very significant. Um, Colin Son, a customer that sh should be pretty price insensitive. Mm. Um, and Wollen Deco also has quite a unique, um, unique offering as well with outdoor mm. uh, wallpaper and so on. I was wondering um, your thoughts on pricing power. It seems to me that um, you're in pretty good spot. Uh, I mean, why, uh, we, we, uh, we are not in a bad spot, no. And this is, I mean, what we decided many years ago to focus on, and that's one of the, you know, the the, the core pillars in the company is to develop and build strong brands because we we get a certain pricing power here, and uh, over the last two years when we have this uh, cost inflation everywhere, we have been quite we have been aggressive in pricing. Uh, having said that, this is also a balancing act, so uh, we, we have to be careful a little bit not to, to, to push too much. Now, we have not planned for an, any price increases uh, beginning of next year. Um, uh, so we do, we do have a strong position, yes, uh, with our brand, but uh, right now we have not planned for any price increases uh, for the next six months, if mm -hmm. nothing extraordinary happens. But if anything, there is, seems to be a, a, a softening in, in uh, both in uh, freight costs, but, uh, but also in uh, dark material. And that gradually will be visible uh, in, our, in our numbers as well. As we mentioned before, uh, the, the Swedish, we have two production sites in Sweden, uh, as you know. Both of them, uh, we purchase everything in Euro and, and uh, the Swedish SEC has not helped us now. now Hopefully, it will not become worse, at least. So, but the softening or the, the lower in purchasing prices has mitigated some of the, the 
exchange rates effects for with SEC so far, yeah. or all of it. You talked about uh, cash flow perhaps not being as strong as, as you had wished in, mm. in Q3. And, and if we um, look at a bit of a longer time horizon here, in the last um, two years, your working capital as a share of sales has increased mm. by roughly 10 percentage points. Mm. Um, and I was wondering, what are your thoughts in this regard over the coming years? Should we see a reversal of this uh, with the accompanying strong cash flow? Is that something you expect? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, the short answer is that we expect the improved cash flow, flow now in the fourth quarter. Um, uh, but if I elaborate a little bit on, the, on, on the, the numbers you mentioned here, if you compare 21 with 23, what has happened since 21 is that we have uh, uh, done one backward integration and acquired a Weaver in, in, in Papelina, and then we acquired Artscape. So, uh, in absolute terms, I mean, they, they, they have, we have increased inventory there. Mm. Uh, and uh, Artscape has relative to its, uh, its revenue has a little bit higher inventory levels as we don't pr produce anything ourselves and we try to balance and optimize the purchasing price uh, we, we, and that's, uh, that's uh, connected to the production volume or production runs actually. Um, we, we, I mean, and then and another uh, point worth mentioning is that we did have a little bit high inventory beginning of this year or the first half and the sales was softer so we have been working quite a lot to take bring down it take down inventory now with the better sales I'm I'm cautiously optimistic now so we will we should arrive on an inventory level that is just north of 130 million I would say end of this year which is more or less where we were uh, end of last year perfect I think uh, that uh, was our time, um, unfortunately. Uh, so thank you very much for thank participating. And uh, stay tuned for more presentations will follow. Thank you.